Again, welcome everyone uh, to Power Apps for Kids APAC uh, Chapter 11. So I have Lani and uh, Andre with me. Uh, Lani, I want to introduce. So uh, Elaine from Melbourne, and I want to organize this for Power Apps for Kids. Some of you would have already known me anyway. So that's all, I guess. <laughs> Jiwa, back to you. Okay. Thanks everyone for joining today. So we have, uh, let me quickly share my screen. I have this, um, uh, just, just two slides of this presentation. I'm sorry, it's quite tricky in this um, Zoom, right? Hope you guys can see my screen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah, so um, we have Power Apps for Kids. So this is an APAC chapter of the Power Apps for Kids. We also have US and UK, uh, which is run by a separate organizers. So for today's uh, agenda, we have Niam showing us uh, Flappy Bean uh, apps, how to recreate it. And it's gonna be a part one of the part uh, two part series. And the follow it's gonna be followed by Nicole, uh, who is gonna uh, show us a Power Virtual Agent. And after that, we'll see some, uh, we'll share the uh, materials about the Power Apps for Kids and the website and the YouTube channel uh, where you can follow and uh, get the contents which we are going to present, the solutions and the slides will be shared there as well. So we'll be having an announcement uh, about the next event, which is gonna be a special event for us for this year. It's gonna be the one year anniversary event. Uh, and I'll talk about it uh, more uh, later. So with that, um, yeah, today we have uh, two speakers, Niam and Nicole, and then uh, the APAC organizers, uh, Elaine, myself, and Andre. So yeah, with that, um, I'll just stop the sharing and I'll let uh, Niam to share and start her Flappy Bean app. Okay. Okay, let me share my screen. Yeah. So I'm sharing my screen right now. Yes, we can see. Okay. Hi everyone. So I'm Nhiem Duang. Early, I'm a solution architect at Power Objects. So I'm from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, and currently I'm based in Minneapolis, Minnesota, US. So in today's section, I want to show you how that you can recreate your flappy beans in Power Apps. So this is my very first Power Apps game I ever built, even though I've been building Power Apps for a while. Um, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to rebuild this. Um, and then remember there were always room to improvement and refactor is later. Um, yeah, so let's go into the demo. I'm gonna show the demo from my phone. Bear with me a second. Let me connect. So, so I'm open my app, and now I'm gonna play it. Okay, yeah. If I don't like the music, I can turn it off and then I keep jumping it. Um, when uh, I build this game. Uh, Niam, so we can't hear the music, uh, this is the song. Oh, okay. How I'm supposed to share the sound in this? Uh, share sound. Okay, I'm gonna try again. Okay. Okay, so the music is a lot uh, when I'm talking, so I just turn that off, but this is the full version that I view. So you see it has a lot of obstacle up and down. And then um, right now I don't set it at level. So it's just randomly appear. Um, so I don't really have to manage the level stuff. But um, yeah, this is the app that I built in the full version. Um, 
for today's section, I built a simpler version that uh, I can walk you through the progress to rebuild the home thing. And I already uploaded this on my GitHub. I will clean up the phone version um, and then I will also will upload that on my GitHub as well. Um, so this is the simpler version. I'm gonna quickly play it and then we go into the uh, building part. So that's the simpler version. Um, now we're gonna go into the building. Let me stop sharing this. Put the phone away and I'm gonna show you. Oops, a little bit too fast. Yes, yeah, so this is a summary of what we're gonna try to achieve. Um, so this one is just a lot thing from the screen, just look for fun. So the action thing that we're gonna build is gonna splash screen, the play game screen, and the game over screen. Um, so that's the idea. We're gonna use this as a guide and when we build this. Um, so this is the GitHub site. I'm gonna copy, put it in the chat so that you guys can um, download it go with it and download. So the idea, we are gonna have two apps. So the work in progress is the one that blank app, uh, but it has all the medias and the audio that we can start building on this. And this is the full simple version that you guys can download and play it on your phone um, later today uh, or when you want to compare it a little bit later. So let me open this and give you this link in the chat, okay. Uh, how do I accept the chat from here? Sorry, this is my first Zoom meeting, to be honest. Okay, so I put the GitHub link in so yeah, you guys can download it. So if from the apps, um, you can download the W work in progress one. So I just want to quickly show you where I got the media's clip art from. So it's from Open Game Arts, um, and the game is Flappy Beans. Um, I put all of the details in the README file in this as well, so that if you interested to learn more where I get those from, you can download it. Uh, where is the open area? Open area. Sorry. Chat the canvas app creation, but where can we open the file? Okay, I'm gonna show you how we can open the file. Okay, so maybe first step you want to download the MS app first. Now I'm gonna go to let me close this one and show you from the beginning. So in order to open an MS app file, what you go need to do, you go and create a new app uh, first. Right. You can open it from any editing edit uh, app. Uh, right now, I just create a new app. And then go to open and then browse. This is where you're going to select the MS app that you download from the GitHub. I don't need to save any change in that app. Uh, so just close it. And now it's gonna load in the MS app file. So it's have a uh, few media control in it. So it might take some time to load. Uh, but once it load that you can see, I already create three screen. Um, and then in the media, I already upload on the files and the audio that I download from Open Game as. Um, so yeah, so we got to this point. Uh, do you have any questions so far? Excuse me, this is Akshita. Yeah. Can you please share the open game art link on the chat? Ah, uh, yes.
also you can uh, revisit so if you lose the chat you can revisit it under my github uh, i put on the link of the media files and the cells in there okay so we go back to the stream and um in order to view this quickly i gonna compare this with this so this under the oops so i gonna have um that screen on the order monitor and then i'm gonna show you how uh, i create this canvas i make it very easy for us to just drag and drop things so in the version that I build, I use uh, containers. It's one of the new thing that Microsoft released. Um, it's a little bit learning curve, um, but you can visit that one and have a like river engineer, uh, like you can look at it later. Uh, in this, I kind of drag and drop controls uh, and image directly on the screen so that we can put it in. So if any time that you want to see the image and you find it's hard, just go to the open game R, download it, open it on your, on your file explorer so that you can see it and then you can just quickly drag and drop it. Uh, for example, um, this is my home screen. I want the flappy bar, flappy beans. So it's FS34. So I'm gonna just drag it on this one. Boom. And then I have uh, the bean. And then I have uh, tap, tap. So I just drag and drop things on the screen and then I can just organize it on the screen. That's the beauty of Canvas app. So. Get ready. And oh, no, I cannot read. So get ready is 31. Okay, I got everything that I need now. I just drag and drop thing on the stream. I want this to be filling, so no gap. Uh, get ready. It's so big, I'm gonna make it smaller. Yeah, just drag and drop stuff on the screen. Flappy beam, very big. These things, open. Get ready, I miss a play button. I will need that play button in. Okay, good. Now I have my one. one. And then uh, don't forget to put credit for the source that um, I get the media file from. Uh -oh. And then this is in the middle. Um, make it a little bit smaller. So to make it look that blurry, transparent background, I normally just pick, uh, for example, white. And then I go to the fill value. And then you can just reduce this to, to 50% so that it looks transparent on the screen and it looks nice. So now I have this, I want on select of this. We will go to play game, stream play game. Perfect. So that's, we just finished our splash stream. Okay, now we go to the play game. This is where all the fun happen. Uh, this is where all your question about how to create animations, how to make the beam move and all the kind of stuff. So the very first thing that I want to do is I gonna, we're gonna need a beam first. 
we need the object that falling, jumping, like our main character. So use this. This is going to be my main character. It's way too big. So I'm going to review the size. I think 100 should be good enough. Okay, so this is my bean. I put it in here. Before we go further, there's a place that I want to show you is on start of the app. I already create a bunch of constants. These are variables that you can reuse throughout the apps. So what are these? These are the number that I already, uh, when I'm building the game, I already try out this number and I know this is the best uh, in this version. So that's why I have it here. So have a look at those variables. So the first one, we have gravity. This is just uh, like, what if, if we want to the beans to be formed, this is our, my gravity number. Um, and then this is the velocity that I want the bean jump. This is the velocity that I want my obstacle when it moves, which is, and these are just obstacle width, hey, and then minimum y value, maximum y value. We're gonna go to that uh, part when we get there. Um, just quickly show you this thing first. Okay, so on the play game, how do we gonna make the beams drop? Like how we make it move like this. So if we just want it to draw, so when I move that you see the Y values changing. Oops. I'm moving it. If we just want it to drop, so the Y value need to change. And how are we gonna make that change automatically without having to touch it and drag it like this? So in order to achieve that automation, there's a control in Canvas app that is called Tamer. This is going to be the one that help us move the bean automatically. So for the bean, I'm going to just name it a bean. Uh, I put I so that it's shorter and we can call it easier. And then for the Tamer, um, I just say Tamer game loop. The simple version, we only have one timer, but for the more complicated version, the more you build this, you might need more timer. Uh, but for this purpose of this, we just need one timer. And I name it a timer game loop. This is the timer gonna help us run the whole game. We only need this for now. And I put it in here so that we can see it. I want it to be auto star. Um, and I want it repeat. Currently, um, the timer by default is have like 60,000 milliseconds, which is like one minute. I don't want to wait that long. Um, so I'm going to put it like 500 first, and then we're going to test it as we go. Okay. So this is the bean, and as we see earlier, if we want the bean to be, we stimulate the dropping of these beans due to gravity, we're gonna need to change the Y value. So this has to be a parameter. So in this scenario, I'm gonna just use a local variable for this bean. So we only need those variable on this stream. So what I'm gonna do is on timer in. I'm gonna call the bean y value as by. And then it's going to be by plus, when it's formed, the y gonna uh, increase. So that's why we need to plus. And what are we gonna plus? We are gonna plus the gravity variable. Currently the gravity is 10. So every time that the timer run is gonna increase 10 more in the Y value of the bean. 
Okay, so this is what it's look like. Oops, grab it in. Okay, and then my bean, I'm gonna set this as B, Y. Right now it's blank, but um, as soon as we play it, it should. I can start. I need to move this just a little bit. Voila! We just make the first animation in the bean. Is the bean is moving right now, and it's just dropping due to gravity. That's what we want. The first thing. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit um slow and it doesn't look smooth. So I test this many times and my best number is gonna be 100. So when I play it, it's gonna drop so nicely. So here's the problem. Now it drop. How are we going to reset it? <laughs> so what we're gonna do is um on visible of the stream. I'm going to set my bin default value to be zero. So when it appears on the screen, it's always on top of the screen. OK, so now my bin needs to go back to zero. And on, when I play it, it's dropped. OK, so that's our first one. Next, what we want to do is we want every time that we touch on the screen, no matter where, the bin gonna jump. So I don't want it to keep uh, falling like this. So what I'm gonna do, I insert a button throughout the screen. I just put it throughout the screen. This is my button. I'm gonna play, name it as button, play game. So I remember what it's about. It's look very, ugly like this so i'm gonna make it transparent um so you don't see it transparent transparent everything is transparent um so no weird hover when you click on it okay Looks good. So what we want is on select of this. We're gonna copy this. And then on select of this, I want the BY to jump so that your BY gonna be minus. And this is gonna be the bean velocity. Bean velocity. Currently, I'm set bin velocity 100, but feel free to change this as you need uh, later when you want. Okay, so let's try it. Jump, jump. Okay, so this is exactly what we want. We want jump, spawn, and then you hit and it jump. Okay, so that's the first part um, of the bin. And um, one thing that uh, we're gonna try it again is that, so you just see that I just <laughs> jump the bin outside of the uh, stream. That's that's something that we don't want. So how how are we to going to prevent that? So I'm gonna make an if condition. If if any time that the bin minus bin velocity less than zero. So any time that is outside of the street, then we're gonna make sure that it stay at the street, inside the street, at the beginning of the street. So it's gonna, I'm gonna update the BY value to be zero. Okay. And then run it. Oops, sorry. Next something. Again, by minus this. 
Let me update context. py. Oops. Comma. Syntax error. Let's try again. Okay. So this is slightly what we want. We want it to be inside the stream. We don't want it to be outside of the stream. We can do the same thing with this so that the falling never be out of the stream. But because a little bit later, we're going to handle collisions with the ground and the obstacle. So our beans, at the end of the day, our bean never got a chance to be at the very outside of the stream at the very end. So just cover the first part that is on top of the stream. One thing that I want to do is the bean by default, I want it to be in the middle of the stream instead of this number. So what I want to do, I, I can just drag it, but then I'm going to lose the formula. I don't want it. Uh, so I'm going to use a formula here, which is parent dot width minus self width. This is the key formula to make every component in the middle. Is that parent dot width, which is the screen size, screen width, minus self width, and then minus uh, and then divide it by two. This formula is going to set your control in the middle of the stream beautifully. Okay, this is what we want. Jump, still inside stream. Perfect. So that's our bean falls due to gravity, and then we make the bean jump. The next thing, also the exciting thing we want to do is we want the bean uh, to have animation. So every time that you click on the screen, you want the bean to have different stage. Um, so if you go to the file, so here, oops, it's on the other screen. This one, two, three. We want this in our app. So how are we going to achieve this? Um, I have a slide about that. Let me show you. Oops. So this is our control. And in order to achieve this, you're going to need a variable called beam status. Um, I name it B status. And this is how I'm going to do it. So every time that we touch the button, uh, we press the button, we want to switch between status one, two, and three. This is the formula to achieve that. So if bin status is one, then we update the bin status to be two. If it's two, then we update to three. If it's three, then we update to one. So that's on the on select of the play game button. On the image of the bin itself, we're going to switch between these three image. So each bin status value will have one image correspondingly. Okay. So now let me apply that into our uh, bin. So button play game. This is we're going to need to put some command in it. Otherwise, we're going to forget what it does. So this is being forms build. Ah, this is being jumps. And the next thing we want to do is being status. So I'm going to do copy. So that's fast. Um, and then I'm gonna also put in the chat so that you guys can download. Ha, I totally agree that we need some auto generation. <laughs> okay, so you can copy it and put it in very fast. Um, but the idea is, is bin status, and then I want to switch between those status. Okay. And what is the next thing that I want to do is in the bin image, go to the image value. Daniel, <clears throat> Jiva, uh, you um, got five more minutes. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm going to finish the pin animations and then we're going to hand it over to Nicole. Okay. Yeah. No worries. So I'm visible of this. Right now, if you see that nothing happened um, because we need to set the first time bin status, what it should be. So I'm going to bin status one. Okay. In order to say it again, I to stimulate the on visible. The trick is you move to another screen and then go back to the screen, and then you can see that on visible. Okay, and then it plays it. Let it fall. And then you see that our beans is moving. So the very first part of the beans done. And I guess that we can continue the obstacle and check coll collisions in the next sections. I do hope that you enjoyed this so far and feel free to ask if you have any questions. That is so cool, Nim. <laughs> Thank you. Love it. I'm gonna save this and uh, we're gonna continue the next session from here. Okay. Uh, Nim, do you have tips for the kids if they want to get like pictures, if they want to change the beans or something else, like where, where can I get these images? Um, there's a, a lot of options to choose from the open game art. Um, yeah, if, if we want, we can definitely switch to another image and then nah, we can use it inside our apps. Cool. Like if you don't like, so the whole idea is um, once you develop the logic of this, if you don't like this image, you can quickly delete on and then you import new image and just update the image. And then, yeah, you got the new game. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Oh, it is. It's amazing app. Uh, Very wonderful. I, I think for me, the max is going to be most difficult part. Uh, yeah, I, I wish we have an app to auto generate those max formula as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's probably uh, easier for the kids than us, Jiwa, because I think when it comes to maths and calculations, mm -hmm. they, they are learning it. Like we have left it a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, true. I don't think they have problem with that. <laughs> yeah, I have calculator in my iWatch, in my uh, phone, and all of them basic maths. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Liam. That's a great session. Again, can't wait to see the part two of it. Sure, uh, sure. Yeah. In November. Let's see. Uh, let's plan something like that. And uh, if any of you have any question, please uh, drop your questions in the chat. Uh, Niam will be able to help you out. And I also shared her uh, LinkedIn profile. If you, want, if you want to reach out to her, uh, please reach out to her and I hope she can help you with that. And with that, I'll pass it to Nicole. So Nicole is going to excite us showing uh, Power Virtual Agent and how to build a bot and play with that. Over to you, Nicole. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I will share my screen first. Okay, I'll share this one first so that um, I guess we can kind of go through a bit of what... Um, uh, oh, you guys can see my screen, right? Yes, Nicole, yes. yeah. Okay. Okay, so then um, essentially, um, you know, like for the kids and I guess for everybody who doesn't know about chatbots, um, I'm pretty sure everybody has seen it before. It's just that sometimes we might not use it or um we just like ignore it so uh, essentially so um what is a chatbot um to make it on uh, uh to summarize or to make it easy to understand it's just basically a computer inside the computer like a computer program that can chat with us humans over the internet so um it is also known as the chatterbox or like the talk um talk bot and um you know, like, uh, I feel that, you know, when uh, when you guys slowly grow up, uh, you know, when you go on websites for online shopping or like, let's say uh, you want to book like a flight ticket and then you don't know what to, um, 
um, you don't know how to go through the website to find what you want, um, that is where usually a chat bot is used. So it is like a, so, so it feels like you are talking to a human, but um, in fact, um, this chat bot um, can be used 24 hours in a day. So it doesn't need to sleep, which is good. So in case you're in some other country and you need to uh, book something or you want to buy something, um, that chat bot can help you kind of go through that website itself. So um, now I will be, um, uh, okay, yeah. So now uh, I'll link the uh, chat bot that I created, a simple one, and then we can go through uh, how to make one together later on. So this is a simple chat bot that I made. And uh, let me know if the link doesn't work, but I tried it on earlier and it should be working. So um, you guys can try out, you know, like type hello or like good morning. It's like a greeting for the person you're gonna talk to. So if you say hello, and then, so um, I named this uh, chatbot Gina. You can name it whatever you want. You can actually do many things with the chatbot itself. You can, uh, it's not only for business. It's not only for um, like uh, professional websites. You can make it yourself. Or like you make it to suit your own uh, needs and then to see what you can play around with it as well. So it's similar to what a um, memes app is. You can create, uh, your own game to however you like. So um, let's say you wanted to watch um, something today and then you're a bit bored. So let's say you are like uh, maybe interested in food. So you want to watch something about food. So over here, it will kind of um, give you the options about uh, what um, TV shows you can watch. And then you can pick one. Um, if you want to go back uh, to choose another kind of uh, topic, you can say, oh, you know, uh, the chatbot did ask, do, do you uh, want to explore? Then can you please send the link again? Okay. Sorry, give me a moment. Uh, can you see it? Did I send it through? Yes, Nicole, we can see it uh, okay. once and twice. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. And then so that it says that, you know, do you want to explore other options? So you want to choose another topic that um, you want to watch another type of movie or show. You can, uh, you can press yes. And then the chat bot will automatically by itself start over and it will introduce itself and ask you um, which topic you want to watch. So let's say you might want uh, to watch a just a fun movie, like a classic movie. So these movies, I'm pretty sure um, you guys probably haven't really watched it or uh, I'm assuming that um, uh, it is not uh, really shown now on TV. But to me, when, uh, when I was your age, these are, the TV, uh, these are the movies that I will watch and they, um, whenever I'm sad, it does give me quite a lot of laughter. And let's say you want to end this. So, you know, like maybe you picked that you wanted to watch The Parent Trap now. So... Um, so when the bot asks you that, do you want to watch, um, want to explore other options? You can say no. And then um, it will just tell you, okay, have a good time watching. So I guess now I'll be demonstrating how to um, create a new chat bot. So um, essentially uh, you guys can go to a virtual power agent. Let me hold on. Uh, Power virtual agent, yeah. Okay, so then um, I'll link it and you guys can maybe try in your free time to create one. Um, do ask your parents for help to sign in or maybe you can try for free over here. But since uh, I signed up with my school account um, uh, and I did it uh, before with Elaine in a, in a previous program. So she taught me how to use this as well. So, um, in home, you can uh, essentially create a new bot, which might take a few minutes. So over here, there's a robot kind of icon over here. And then um, you can create a new bot. So um, any name suggestions for the bot, you guys? You can type it in the chat or just unmute. Jiva. <laughs> okay. It's the best bot during the workplace. 
when my manager responds as something. Okay. So, I mean, we all speak a common language English right here. So we can create, uh, it might take a few uh, minutes or like a few, like probably less than a minute when I was creating it. So um, please chuck in any questions you have in the chat or like if you want to kind of video call another day to ask about um, how to build your own chatbot, uh, I can assist you as well if you guys like. Okay, so I'm assuming it created the chatbot. Loading. Okay, it's still creating a chatbot, unfortunately. But um, I think I can go through my own chatbot. That kind of helps. If that helps. Okay, it's still creating my chatbot. Um, my apologies. <laughs> I think I can still go through the topics um, since that is, I would say, uh, the chunk of my explanation. Oh, I think it created my chatbot. Okay, so my chatbot Jiva is created. And um, with these icons, these are set in the program itself. So um, you can't add anything new to it. So let's say um, like how you greet the bot, you can say good morning or you can say hello. So these are all the trigger phrases. So when a customer um, types in any of these phrases, the chatbot will respond to you. And then um, you have other topics as well. You can create your own topic. You, you can, let's say, add a new topic. And then um, like, let's say you want to say, a few, uh, sorry, like you want to say feelings. So when you type in happy, or maybe let's say sad, or excited. Depressed. Sorry? Depressed. Okay, sorry, depressed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard I pressed something wrong. <laughs> it's okay. So then like, let's say depressed. So then these are the trigger phrases. And so-called, if a customer types these, um, uh, these words into the test bot, or like uh, eventually when you publish your own um, chat bot, when you type it in this message over here, it would trigger some type of answer to the customer or trigger some type of response. So you can uh, so you can get creative with the different type of topics that you want your... Oh, and also always remember to save topic. You uh, Before testing anything, I guess it's really important for um, any kind of computer program you guys will be using in the future. You guys should always remember to... Um, um, constantly save your work so that it doesn't get lost. And yes, sometimes there may be backups, but um, we can't, uh, not, not all computer programs can guarantee that, I would say, from experience. And not every computer program um, is kind of up, up uh, kind of uh, in person kind of updating at the same time. So let's say, um, okay, so let's say we can go into greeting over here, and then you can go to go to authorize. Uh, uh, authoring canvas. So this is where you can start your kind of chatbot. So these are the triggering phrases. So let's say um, you can say that, I mean, you can change things here. You can delete, let's say I delete this because I might not uh, need to use this and I can delete this as well. You can really customize it any way you want. Um, like, let's say, hi, I'm Jiva, I am your personalized chatbot. And then you can say, I can help you. I, I can help you with deciding. I can help you with deciding what movies to watch today. So when I did a program with Elaine, um, I kind of uh, did something similar. It was more of if I was bored that day, what type of activities, what I want to do. So you kind of recommend me Let's say I like baking, so then it will give me baking recipes so I can bake um, cookies and cakes. And so, so from here, you can add a node, which is like a point. Um, you can do call to action or 
or you can do ask a question and from over here you can do multiple choice like you know like your homework a b c d or one two three four or you can do a person a boolean a boolean means like a yes or no so it's essentially a zero or one positive or negative city names colors and date time email and there's so much more it will, it will help uh so let's say if, if it's an email and then like you can ask um uh uh like let's say the chat bot will send you the um um the link to the kind of uh, movie that you want to watch later on so let's say uh the chat bot wanted to ask that oh so what is your what is your email over here so like when the person types in a general email and typically because you know all emails they have an at and maybe they have a dot com at the end so it will look out for these key kind of um symbols inside what the customer typed in so that um, it will make sure that it's an email but let's say we don't want an email um let's say we can choose multiple choice for today i'll do something really similar to what i uh, i showed you in the example and the link that that i sent so let's say um, the bot asked um, what, type, uh, what type of movie, movie or show do you want to watch? So over here, you can add as many options as you like. Let's say, um, because I like baking, so I might say baking shows, and then maybe some of you might like cars, so maybe you can like uh, write cars as well. Superhero. Oh. Okay, superhero, <laughs> Marvel, the new movie, I, um, or like the cartoon <laughs> ones. Oh, I love the cartoon ones. <laughs> and then uh, like maybe, you know, maybe the girls, they like Barbie or um, I don't know if uh, if you guys can watch. Uh, which, environment, uh, which environment did you use to create the bot? Um, the power, uh, power virtual agent. I'll, I'll send, I'll send the link again. No, because when I'm in power virtual agent, it's asking select an environment. It's showing the default is MOE login. MO, MOE login. I uh, can I share screen once and show you. Okay, um, I'll finish explaining this and then we can go through that. Um, I'll make sure there's, okay. the, uh, there's the time. So I'll probably finish it enough uh, because these are just kind of, uh, you can repeat it. And um, to be honest, I'll say that I'm just showing you a very simple one, but um, okay. the, the best way to learn it is to actually kind of build it by yourself so that you can explore it more as well. So, uh, okay, so let's say we have these four options. Um, and of course, to always remember to save once in a while so that in case your internet gets lost, um, nothing is kind of lost. So it is currently saving topic. So topic saved and let's say baking shows. So um, you can either show a message or, you know, ask more questions. So uh, go to another topic, which is the topics that we uh, were looking at earlier. So let's say we're going to show message and then we can say that, oh, how about... Um, so oh, let me think of a baking show. Okay, so so they so they nailed it. It's a baking show that I like to watch recently. So that it can recommend it to me, and then you can continue to add so on. And let's say you know we can move on to superheroes. Okay, let's say we can move on to superheroes. Then you know there's a the new Marvel movie Shang Chi. So you know we can say oh you know like how about um. Shang-Chi and then it's um it is out in the cinema. So then you know um these are just recommendations for you guys. And then uh like of course, like I said, I can say it over and over again. Um it's a very fun kind of application to kind of explore by yourself. And what I think will happen in the future is that a lot of um houses will have these inbuilt. So now we do have Google Home. Or like um, I think uh, uh, Amazon is selling it as well. There are many applications. So, um, yes, yes. So that it's like building Lego blocks. So I mean, one key thing is to actually not get lost and and maybe try to be as neat as possible, 
because like me, I'm, I lost my page already. But then you can always recenter. But always just remember that, uh, you know, try to make it neat. And how I plan this is that usually I will draw it out first before um, I kind of put it onto the screen and the app itself so that um, I know what needs to be done and what are the steps to do it. And I feel that that can be applied to many of your, let's say, school projects. You know, plan it out first, draw it on a drawing board or on a piece of paper before you kind of uh, go into and write out uh, and uh, before doing your solution. I think that will be a short summary of what um, I plan to kind of demonstrate today. So I think, yeah, you can share screen and I think um, either me or Elaine can help you with it. Hey Nicole, thank, thank you so much for the session. It's such a nice session to start with the Power App for uh, sorry, Power Virtual Agent. And yeah, you made a great choice by choosing the right name for the bot. <laughs> and I'm sure that that's the best bot you ever could create. I'll, I'll send you a personalized bot during my holidays for Princess. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Jess. Yes, um, so um, I don't think you can share your screen now, but I will please connect uh, with, I mean, Elaine and I will be staying in the call uh, and Andre also. So you can ask us and we can help you to solve that. Is that okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any of you have any questions, please uh, let uh, Nicole know and she'll be able to answer you. The chatbot and the Flappy Bean games was very nice. Thank you. Thank you. I hope, I hope that, you know, maybe um, you can send us your own chatbot in the future. Hello. In the future, you can send us your own chatbot as well and we can see. And then we can probably play around with it as well. And you can maybe make your own flappy bean. Yeah. Okay, so if you I guess don't if there are have... no more questions, you can move forward. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Yeah, if there's no questions, probably I'll just... Uh... Uh, share my screen and I'll pass it to Elaine to do the announcement for the next big event. Elaine, I'm sharing my screen and um, if you can just do the announcement, it would be great. Uh, everything to see your screen and not your face. Alright, uh, so next month is our one year anniversary so we're doing a special event next year we're gonna try and have an all kids event we have not decided how long the session will be it depends on how many of you registered because we want to try and give everyone a chance to present so if you build an app or maybe you want a chat bot um, can i also present yeah sorry this is akshita can i also present yeah, you can present, of course. I think I messaged your daddy about it already. Yeah, so just uh, message me or Jiwa. Jiwa, can you leave our email address on the chat so they could email us? Uh, let us know by end of this month if you want to present. It could be just a five, ten minutes thing. Just show us your app, what you have built. Don't need to explain how you build it. Um, and... Yeah, we have a Halloween team like what we do last year. If you want to dress up, have some fun, build some Halloween apps if you want to. By all means, just do that. And if you have friends who want to present, if you know any friends who do an app and you want them to get involved, let them know as well, okay? So that's what we're doing next month. I hope to see you guys bring your friends along. We're going to have a fun session next month. Then after that, I think we'll take a break, Jiwa, right? For November, December, because it's mostly school holidays and we'll come back again next year. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so Microsoft has launched this uh, tech resilient curriculum for kids, uh, not for, for kids, for students. So for anyone who want to get involved in the Microsoft tech, there's a growth and resilience tech toolkit. So if you I could find the link and pop it, or else I'll pop it on the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys could 
click on it and have a read. Yeah, I got um, it. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool if you want to get involved in that. No, all good, Ellen. Uh, um, so, so thank you so much again, everyone, for joining today. I hope uh, you learned uh, on uh, the Power Apps how to start with your uh, creating a game with the Power Apps and also creating a bot with using Power Virtual Agent. And yeah, thank you and stay safe. Let's see you in the next big event, October 23rd. Thank you.